located in the eastern state of West Bengal, India, Purulia is a land of rolling hills, dense forests, and a rich tribal culture. The region is home to several indigenous tribes, including Santo, Munda, and Bhumij, who have been living in harmony with nature for centuries. The people of Purulia are known for their warmth and hospitality. The tribal communities have a rich cultural heritage, with their own unique art forms, music, dance, and cuisine. In essence, Purulia is a region of great natural beauty, rich cultural heritage, and diverse wildlife. It is a land that has managed to retain its traditional charm, while also embracing modernity. A visit to Purulia is a must for anyone who wants to experience the raw beauty of nature and the warmth of tribal hospitality. The hills of Purulia are a sight to behold, with their lush green forests, cascading waterfalls, and scenic landscapes. The forests of Purulia are teeming with wildlife, ranging from leopards to elephants and deer. The Purulia district is also home to the elusive hyenas. The Chha'u dance, a traditional tribal dance form, is particularly famous and is performed during festivals and ceremonies. Forests are also home to several species of birds, including the Indian Pitta, the Paradise Flycatcher, and the Black-Headed Oriole. This movie is based completely on searching for these extremely elusive nocturnal hyenas in one infamous hills of Puruliyar. We open on a dense forest in Puruliyar, West Bengal. The sounds of chirping birds and rustling leaves can be heard in the background. A group of wildlife enthusiasts, including our protagonist Sam, is trudging through the forest with their cameras and binoculars in hand. Sam, a passionate wildlife photographer, is leading the group. He is determined to capture the elusive hyenas of Purulia on camera. The group comes across several wild animals like deer, foxes, and monkeys, but Sam is not satisfied. He knows that the hyenas are still out there, waiting to be found. We decide to trek all the way to the hilltop to locate the possible den of the hyenas, as informed by the locals. It's a steep climb. After 20 minutes of rigorous climbing we locate fresh hyenas cat, must be few hours old. Sam screams in excitement and mentions, the den must be nearer. So we are getting inside the den right now. So this is quite adventurous. After around 30 feet climb, we locate the hyena den. Animal skeletons and clothes are scattered there. Sam decides to place a camera trap. It was time to make way for the elusive beasts for which we have come. On the way down we got excellent close-up shots of the Indian rock eagle owl on the rocks. The Indian eagle owl, also called the rock eagle owl, is a large horned owl species native to hilly and rocky scrub forests in the Indian subcontinent. It is splashed with brown and grey, and has a white throat patch with black small stripes. We couldn't resist ourselves from taking some shots and head back to the valley. Now it was a waiting game. Sadly that night we could not see any kind of movement. Maybe the hyenas have moved away to some other place citing human presence.
It's a new morning with new possibilities, so we headed towards the same spot with renewed energy. As we were passing through a remote tribal area, a group of tribal hunters is sitting there laughing and chatting, enjoying their catch. To our surprise we see two dead wild rabbits tied to snare traps. What are you doing? Don't you know that hunting wild animals is illegal? We have been hunting in these forests for generations. It's our right. Your right? What about the rights of these animals? They are a crucial part of our ecosystem and hunting them is causing irreparable damage. What do you know about our ways of life? We have been living in harmony with nature for centuries. Living in harmony doesn't mean killing off the very animals that sustain our ecosystem. You need to understand that hunting wild animals is not only illegal, but it's also harmful to the environment. The hunters look unconvinced, but Sam continued to explain the consequences of their actions. Sam. Sadly, look around you. The forests are becoming barren, the rivers are drying up, and the wildlife is disappearing. All of this is because of human greed and ignorance. If we don't act now, we will lose our forests and our wildlife forever. Hunting in any form is prohibited under the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. A number of NGOs are trying to stop this horrific ritual by trying to implement stringent laws through apex courts and governing councils in place. Only these measures will not be enough. The state government and forest department should come forward and provide the tribes with alternate income sources that may diminish the ongoing slaughter of innocent animals for fun. We got extremely upset after this encounter and decided to leave the spot immediately and try our luck on the farmlands near the banks of Boraco River to search for another elusive mammal, the Bengal fox. On our way we got some exclusive shots of the Indian garden lizard. The oriental or Indian garden lizard is an agamid lizard found widely distributed in Indomalaya. It has also been introduced in many other parts of the world. Its head and half the body almost becomes orange during breeding season. Contrary to local belief it does not suck the blood out of you by just by looking at you, a harmless, non-venomous little lizard that keeps our gardens best free by eating insects. got a tip from one of the local farmer about a particular spot in the paddy fields where Bengal foxes are frequently seen and decided to mount our cameras from a distance and wait. Hello, how are you all? I have my team with me. They are in front of us. And right now, where we are going? Well, let's give it a surprise. Let's give it a surprise. Uh, I'll let you know in a few minutes. You can attack it. It was like uh, we tried to track down the hyenas. We even went for the eagle owls, and I got uh, shots of the eagle owl, but uh, just for a brief period of time. Uh, so today we are here to film a very rare species, which is found in Bengal. That is called the Bengal fox. And if you if you see the setup, like we have done, one guy is there. Uh, he is camouflaged. We have 
kept a quite a safe and very comfortable distance with the fox family because we're expecting that the foxes the fox family is inside those dens after waiting for about an hour suddenly we saw movement from inside the burrows two bengal foxes came out from there and disappeared within seconds into the adjoining bushes we couldn't even click a single picture some sightings hold more importance over electronic evidence it was around 5 p.m. and now we decided again to rush to the hills to try our luck on the hyenas. The locals mentioned perhaps they have made Achilles rotten smell was in the air around. Sam mentioned this is the perfect stage to see them as hyenas are mostly scavengers by nature. The sun was setting fast. There was calm all around and we obliged to it. With crickets chirping and sound of nocturnal birds all around the forest and the hills looked dramatic. So right now we are waiting for the potential hyena spot. Our team has gone to set up the camera trap. Let's see if we are lucky. And it's quite a time now for them to come out. They are completely nocturnal animals and we are expecting a high percentage of them to come out. So as of now, from the information received from the locals, there are around four hyenas here. One mother with two sub cubs and another male who lives alone. Sam kept hovering his torch over the cliffs in regular intervals. An hour passed and we were thirsty, tired and hungry. The body was giving up but the mind stayed determined. I feel asleep for a brief moment and then suddenly Sam whispered, He is here. For a moment it took time to come to terms with what I actually heard as I was fresh from a power nap. Moni, our local guide pointed his torch and finally I got the first glimpse of what we came for, what we toiled for, the hyena. Our shutters went bonkers as the beast realized our presence and tried to run for his life. Sir it was the lone male, Moni uttered as it disappeared again after two minutes of sighting. We had some decent proof shots. This particular male lives a particularly secluded life as per Moni but gives bold sightings whenever it comes out said Moni. We made our way back to their camp, buzzing with excitement about the day's adventure. We shared our pictures and videos with each other, reliving the experience. The next morning was a pretty relaxed one. It was our last day of filming before we head back to Kolkata. We woke up late and relaxed in the balcony with hot cups of tea and remembered what a great night we had yesterday. Temperatures in the Chhota Nagpur Plateau cross 40 degrees during peak summer and today were not an exception. Sam suggested we leave for the spot around 3 pm to beat the heat and keep ourselves healthy. As planned we had our lunch in a nearby restaurant and headed to the same spot. The forest here is beautiful filled with dense covering of sal trees, the winds passing through the leaves created nature's no copyright music. I basked in the coolness of the trees and music as Sam rushed to the rocks, this time a bit lower and closer to us to fix his camera trap. As I was browsing through the canopy I suddenly found a nest and two birds building it with lot of care bringing in nesting materials. 
Those were the black-naped monarchs. Spring has sprung and the black-naped monarchs are busy nesting. There's something truly magical about watching these feathered friends build their nests and prepare for the arrival of their little ones. It's a beautiful reminder of the wonders of nature and the cycle of life. I was getting lost in the forest. As I approached deeper my eyes focused on a brown medium-sized bird perched deep in the branches, as I pointed my binocular I was astonished to see, it was a brown hawk owl. If yesterday was about realizing dream, today was all about lifers. I immediately set up my camera and took some videos of this elusive raptor to my heart's content. The brown boobook also known as the brown hawk owl, is an owl which is a resident breeder in South Asia from India, Bangladesh and Nepal east to western Indonesia and South China. It has a hawk-like shape due to its long tail and lack of a distinct facial disc. The upper parts are dark brown, with a barred tail. This species is very nocturnal but it can often be located by the small birds that morbid while it is roosting in a tree. Meanwhile Sam discovered a dead chicken carcass on one of the rocks nearby, might be brought by the hyenas as it looked decomposed and emitting pungent smell, he mentioned, this is an ideal situation and we should not miss the chance. I can sense that we are getting closer. Keep your eyes peeled, everyone. We continued to walk deeper upwards on the dark mountain. Suddenly, we heard a loud growl. We froze in our tracks, wondering what it could be. Everyone, stay calm. We might have just found what we were looking for. We slowly approached the sound, careful not to startle the animal. We soon came across a hyena. I could hardly believe his eyes. This is it. We found them. Get your cameras ready, everyone. We started clicking pictures and taking videos of the hyena. The hyena, however, seemed agitated by the presence of humans and started growling and snarling. We need to be careful. Let's not provoke them. We maintained a safe distance from the hyena and continued to observe him. After a while, he calmed down and started going about his business. The carcass. We took this opportunity to capture some amazing shots and the beast obliged with its swag as it progressed through the rocks effortlessly while giving us momentary stares that added to the drama. The hyena is a rather underrated species often looked at as villains. Their cackle and the fact that hyenas are scavengers and carrion eaters further help to intensify the mythological components surrounding the species. In folklore, hyenas are said to be the mounts of witches, when they stop to feed on carrion, the witches are said to feed on the soul of the dead. Societal culture has turned the animal into a creature abhorred by us. A sad outcome for conservation efforts centered on this carnivore. India is home to the striped hyena, and mostly found around areas like Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Jharkhand, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Bengal, and Gujarat, where the myths about them originated. And a threatened species, with their population numbers dwindling day by day. Hyena populations in India are far few and far in between, hence making it very difficult to keep tabs on them. Their erratic population density puts them at risk to the changes in land use as most human practices reduce their base and destroy their dens. 
Many hyenas in India often undergo extremely horrifying trauma in human wildlife conflict situations, or fall prey to automobile accidents and poachers' snares. The country is home to 20% of the hyena population in the world and their population is steadily decreasing due to hunting practices. In a recent incident, an approximately three-year-old male hyena was brutally attacked in a village in Uttar Pradesh. The chances of survival appeared bleak as the animal had sustained severe spinal fracture leading to hint limb paralysis. Despite all efforts, the hyena succumbed to its injuries. Incidents such as this make it imperative for us to spread awareness about the species and sensitize the public to their plight, as they struggle to gain a foothold in the shrinking forests. Hyenas play a very vital role in maintaining an ecosystem. Apart from getting rid of biological waste by their scavenger habits, they also act as pest control. A healthy ecosystem depends on the balance between species, so the decline of an animal, especially one that plays such an important role in keeping an ecosystem clean and free of diseases should raise a modicum of alarm. Imposing strict fines for inflicting injuries on a wild animal and to bring the culprits to some form of justice is required. Reinforcing awareness modules around fringe forest communities in order to enable them to cohabit peacefully is of the utmost importance. I wish these ignored animals continue to thrive and exist in the hills and forests of Purulia and across the planet for I believe, all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all.